Hello and welcome back to our P tutorial in Petronet add-on and it. So in the past we've gone through how to grab data of different types and how to sample that data and manipulate it in a certain way to be able to get results that we desired. In this episode though, we're going to talk about a node that's quite special, and that is the projection node. This is very useful, especially for landscapes. So let's take a look at how this works and how you can better use it to align things better to your individual landscapes. So for this, to help demonstrate this, I need to have a landscape to best show this off. So <clears throat> let's create a landscape. And I'm just going to make it lower than the map here. I'm just going to bring it down here to negative 200. So it's below the map here. There we are. Okay. And for now, that's all I'm going to write about. Next, I'm going to create a new PTG graph that will take advantage of our landscape. So let's go ahead and create that. Go to PTG, PTG graph. Landscape. Okay, so in the past, you have to sample the data from somewhere. In this case, we've got a landscape. So if you just search for the word landscape, you can get the landscape data. Okay, and from that, we can sample the points from that surface. So let's go down to surface sampler, like that. Okay, brilliant. So now if I was to debug this and just put that into the scene, you can see where it's sampling the surface of our landscape. Okay. Now the different colors you see here are uh, color coded based upon their density, or in this case, they're randomized. You can see this being set up in the PCG itself. So let's go up to a PCG and you see the sampler. And you'll see you've got points per meter, uh, per squared meter rather, and the extents of each point. So basically the extents is basically how wide of an area should each of those points take up. So this is set up to be 100 by 100 by 100. Extents are double. So uh, if you want to take note of like this cube, this cube is one meter cube. But you notice there's lots of gaps in between them. And that's because they are one meter cube, but they've got a one meter gap in between them as well. And that's where the 100 by 100 by 100 comes in. So effectively, you think that's the half size of the, of the point. Uh, the looseness and unbounded, uh, pretty useful. So unbounded means if you turn it off, it affects the whole area, not just our uh, little volume here. And the looseness factor, if I bring that up to say 10, actually let's put it at zero, but not loose at all. You'll see where they are sort of now snapping to the grid sort of shape. Okay. So that looseness will free them up a little bit to not snap around. This is very useful if you're doing like a grid-based sort of system and you want to make a grid-based type gameplay and level design. Uh, you, very easy way of doing it like that. But, alas, we're going to bring up the looseness back up to 1. And I'm going to leave that there. Cool. So the colouring we see in there, this is usually for density. And there you go, apply density to points. Okay, so the density is being assigned to each one. So the greater the number, the whiter it will be. So the more dense the area will be too. Okay, so the black ones will be ones that are furthest away from other things, I'm guessing. It's hard to tell. But um, you normally are manipulating the density as you're playing around with it. But anywho... Let's talk about that projection data because there's a problem with landscaping in PCG. If you were to sample this, if I was to just um, go to landscape here and manipulate and sculpt this, you get it following the landscape just fine for the surface sampler. But let's say you're sampling something else. Let's say you're sampling, say, a spline instead. And we've done a spline before, but I'll make a new one just so you can see. And in here, we do spline and we'll spline sampler. Here we'll get spline data. And if I put the debug on that, chuck that in and put a spline inside of its components that we've done before in previous videos.
and uh, let's take it not to stretch it. Hold on. So I need to go down here, and I want him not stents. Change that to absolute. There we go. So the problem we have with the spline is, say, I'm making a fence and I want to put the fence along the floor. It's lining these things up to the floor can be a bit of a nightmare. Otherwise, it will just clip right through the ground, which we don't want. So if I'm going to be doing this, then, then how the hell do we make it snap to the surface of the map? Because obviously the landscape's got a surface on plus, so that's fine for that. But this, for a fence, isn't. So the way you do that is with the projection node. So if I go into the PCG spline and search for projection and putting our points into here. Now what this projection will do is basically project downwards to find the surface uh, for collision. So let me just turn off the debug for that. And let's take a look at the options we have available in this. So the project positions and project rotations, that will handle the normals and, and positioning of that data, as well as any scaling if you want to do scaling, but normally you have that turned off. Now we'll also see the projection target. So this is where you're projecting it onto. So in this case, we want to do the landscape. So we're going to do landscape data. Hit compile. And with that debug turned on, we should be able to see, uh, you see the debugs there, I need to change the extents. But I'm now following the curvature of the landscape. Just change those debug extents there. Do absolute. Oh, wrong one. Absolute. And there we go. Okay. And that rotation setting is what's to make them turn based upon the normal of the floor. If you didn't want them to do that, you want to ignore the normal of the floor. That's easy enough. Just turn off project rotations. And they'll stay level and they'll just go up and around. This is very good because that means now I can manipulate the landscape in my landscape editor and have no real problems because it will just constantly update itself. It's a lot easier to manage. So that's the projection node. Very useful uh, bit of node. And yeah, it's worthwhile having an experiment with that, especially when you're doing landscape-based uh, ECG generation. So there you go, that's the projection node. It's very useful, as you can see, from doing landscape editing, and it's because it's very, what we call, non-destructive. We can use it to manipulate our landscape and not have an effect on things that are not using the landscape surface data by default. So thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go over some more beautiful PCG nodes that we can use. And if you want to watch more PCG stuff, head over to the Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all our videos early before everyone else. Massive thank you to all our patrons, YouTube members, and uh, all our supporters. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.